I am starting my rounding up of 2018 now, and we're gonna get the bad news out of the way first. So the Glam Dr. Mona Khan and I, we do uh, a weekly, well, we try and do it weekly, <laughs> but we do a series called Top 5 Tuesdays, and on Tuesdays, we will list out a top five fill in the blank. So this week we are doing our top five worst products of 2018. I will link to her video and her channel down below in my description box. Do not forget to check her out and don't forget to subscribe before you leave. I would love that. And let's jump into this list. The first thing on my list is the Sunday Riley, the influencer. This was a foundation they came out with earlier this year. I thought it was terrible. It looked so bad on my skin. It was supposed to be good, if I remember correctly, supposed to be good for like every skin type. It was supposed to have all of these great, you know, natural ingredients, like all these things that Sunday Riley is known for. And it was bad. It looked dry on my skin. It looked cakey in areas. It didn't wear well. It got worse throughout the day, which is not, not a good thing uh, to happen to foundation. And I will admit, I wanted to throw this product on here because shame on Sunday, Riley, <laughs> all that drama that's been going on with them asking all their employees to put basically fake reviews up of their products, to discount other people's bad reviews of things, uh, them admitting to it, which is the first step in the right direction but what a shame because I do actually have I do like some of their products they're they're good and you know I don't think they needed to do that and and yet they did but anyway I just wanted to kind of slip that in there so the influencer foundation not good at all so the next product on my list I'm putting on this list because I don't like the product obviously but not for the same reasons as Sunday Riley but also because of this entire brand so this is the flesh Firm Flesh Thick Stick. This was their little foundation. Foundation stick, it didn't wear well, and it was tiny. It looked like a deluxe sample. So I just didn't really understand it. This company was really trying to ride the marketing wave by having this sort of like, um, shocking kind of like name, you know, flesh. This is a word that a lot of people kind of, you know, it kind of gives us the tingles, uh, m much like moist. You know, these words are just, they're a little bit, th too descriptive, if you will. So I think their products were really trying to just like ride off of this marketing wave. And then on top of it, you know, they released, I think something like 40 foundation shades, which is great, which should be applauded, but they were really pushing that. They were pushing the fact that they put out this huge shade range. They were pushing this whole like kind of, um, you know, shock value kind of like naming thing. And I just don't think the products are that great. And so my respect for a company just kind of goes down from there when I feel like they're really trying to just go off of like, you know, having some sort of catchy marketing thing and then say, we have 40 foundation shades. Again, I think that's awesome. But if your foundation sucks, what's the point? Like all you did was make 40 awful foundation shades. So I just thought that was just disappointing all around. Again, these are things I could look past if the product was really good. But knowing that the product is not good, like I did a whole face of flesh. I really wanted to support this brand. I was like, oh wow, Linda Wells is the one that created this. She was like the OG editor-in-chief of Allure and you know, the 40 foundation shades. I was like, oh, this. let's hope this is good, you know? And no, it wasn't. I think I only liked one or two things from there. I liked the blush and I liked a highlighter. That was it. This foundation was awful, the eyeshadow was bad. Anyway, the Flesh Firm Flesh Thick Stick. I think that's the name, yeah. Firm Flesh Thick Stick, that's number two on my list. Next on my list is a lip product from Tom Ford. This is the Tom Ford Lip Lacquer Extreme. I still have it in the box, because this is, I think, I wanna say the worst lip product I have ever tried. So these have a, matte, if you will, finish, but they're highly metallic. So I got the color Slicker, which is right up my alley. It's this really bright, orangey, like fluorescent kind of orange red. It was so pretty. I put it on, I tried it on in store, put it on my lips, loved it. What happens though, is that it dries down so severely that it just gets really dry and I was like, okay, it's dry. But then it gets to the point where it's so dry, it starts to actually chip off of your lips. It is so uncomfortable, like to the point where it's almost burning. So dry, so uncomfortable and, and it chipped off of my lips. I've never ever, 
ever. Now, I don't generally get like liquid lipsticks or whatever, but I have tried a few and that's never happened to me. And I've tried liquid lipsticks that are really, really drying where you kind of hope that they just like chip off of your lips, but they don't, they hang on. This is terrible. I mean, I mean, really, really, really awful, really awful. And really such a shame too, because you guys know how much I love Tom Ford. Since then, he's come out with great products, but this was a complete fail. Really awful. All right, the next one on my list, if you just watched my declutter of powders and cream blushes, you will have seen this, but the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Powders. This powder, it's nice. It looks nice on the skin, but the smell of this powder is so repulsive because it smells like clay, which to me kind of indicates like it's, it's probably not that good anymore, but like a sour clay, like a foot clay, like a butt crack clay. So, so bad that I am throwing these out. It's like I can't even open up these tubs to just, just like fake it till I make it kind of, just put it on and pretend it's okay and wait for the scent to dissipate. I can't, I can't even open these up and get close to them. They're just absolutely repugnant. So I am throwing this away and, and I know I'm not the only one. So many of you commented that you went in, you couldn't believe how awful it smelled. I know some of you also were like, it's not that bad. You know, I still use it and it's fine. I've talked to many sales associates that sell Charlotte Tilbury and they're like, you can't believe how many returns we've gotten because people were like, what is wrong with this? Like I got a bad one. And then they have to tell them that it's not bad. It's just that we made a powder that smells like foot cheese. So yeah, that is going in the trash. All right, last but not least, I dedicated an entire video to these because they were such a disaster. And I think that was the name of the, the video, kind of a disaster. Uh, these are the Tom Ford Extreme Shadows. This entire like extreme line, he, he should not have bothered with. Awful, I think they're all limited edition anyway. They've gone the way of the Dodo. You will probably see them pop up in outlets soon. Don't even bother, the, not even worth like a dollar, not even worth five cents, just don't even bother. And same with these extreme shadows. So I only have one left because I purchased this when it first came out. This was the one that came out with the shade and illuminate cream highlight and contour with the chrome packaging. Uh, so this came out first and then they came out with like a whole line of them. And I went out and I bought like eight, seven or eight of them. I finger swatched them, they were fine. I was like, oh wow, this has like a really cool kind of like metallic sheen. And this one isn't as bad as the others, but you can't get them onto your eyelid. And as usual, like all the comments, some people agreed, some people were like, oh, they worked fine for me. And I'm like, no, no, they just didn't work for me. There was no pigmentation. They're a really like chunky shadow. I don't even know if you can see that, but every time, I put my finger in there or I put a brush in there. It just looks like sand on a beach. Like it's just kind of sitting on top of the pan there. So it's just a really, really chunky. It's really loose. There's like a ton of fallout when you use them. And then none of it actually stays on your lid. Like it just kind of all goes away. There's no pigmentation. These were really such a disappointment. And I took them all back to Neiman Marcus where I purchased them and they don't even usually take back used makeup. And I was like, this is garbage. And I was like, and I want my money back. <laughs> and they took it back. They were very good about it. But I was like, you need to tell whoever is out there, like, these are not good. And, you know, he came out with a ton of shades and maybe I had picked the wrong shades, but I wasn't about to go and try any other ones. I mean, they just were really, really bad. So I had heard that like the pink and the purple ones were a little bit better, but I had purchased one of the purple ones, I think, and it was not so good. But I got like a red one, a blue one. I got like a green one. Um, I got more of like the jewel tones, the deeper colors, and they were terrible, absolutely terrible. Again, if you see these pop up at your outlet stores, don't even bother. Don't even bother. Not even worth a cent. Well, that was fun. Gosh, I feel like I was just in therapy. Like I just had to get all that off my chest. <laughs> So those are my top five worst products of 2018. I had a couple other things in there that I, I don't know, I was kind of debating like that fifth spot, you know, what I should put in, but I'm comfortable. I'm very comfortable with my five picks. So let me know what some of your worst products were from 2018. I would love to hear from you. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and I'll see you in my next video.